The third part of this chapter is about proteins. So proteins are one of the most diverse type of molecules and they have many, many functions. And understand them and it is not critical for you to memorize the types, names of amino acids or identify the type of amino acid except that you should know what an amino acid look like with an amine group and an acid group. And they have a central carbon which is attached to hydrogen on one side and a side chain on the other side. So based on the property of the functional group attached to that side chain, you can call that amino acid as polar amino acid or non-polar amino acid, acidic amino acid or basic amino acid. So know how to recognize an amino acid and to understand the property of the side chain of that amino acid. Once you know that, learn how to make a dipeptide based on individual amino acids how they go through condensation synthesis and combine to make a dipeptide. Then once you understand that, understand how the four different levels of protein three-dimensional structure work. Okay? The first structure is the primary structure with the amino acid sequence. The second level is how they make a alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet together. And the third structure is a tertiary structure with a side chain interaction. And the fourth level is for complex proteins with subunits interacting together. Okay? That is important to understand. The last part of this chapter talks about nucleic acids. So in nucleic acids, you need to understand the monomer of a nucleic acid, just such as a nucleotide. A nucleotide contains a nitrogenous base, a nitrogen carbon ring structures, and a ribose sugar, a 5-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. That's a general name of a nucleotide. So in the case of DNA, it is a deoxyribonucleic acid. It's missing an oxygen in the ribose sugar. It's called deoxyribose. And it also contains a nitrogenous base and a phosphate group in addition to the deoxyribose. Okay. The DNA contains guanine, adenine as the purine, and cytosine and thymine as the pyrimidine. And RNA contains guanine and adenine, as well as they have the uracil instead of thymine and cytosine as the nitrogenous base. And also RNA contains the ribose with the oxygen in the second carbon, and that is why it's called ribonucleic acid. Okay? RNA is normally a single-stranded structure, but that can form variable secondary structure, whereas DNA is always a double-stranded structure that go in opposite direction, and it is formed as a double helix structure. That is the secondary structure of DNA. The DNA functions as a genetic material in all the living organisms, whereas RNA can also function as a genetic material in some viruses. Okay? So understand the difference between DNA and RNA. So in this overall chapter, this, as I said, it's a very important chapter. You should be able to recognize the individual monomers for carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Okay? But you don't need to identify with a specific name, but you should know this is an amino acid, a fatty acid, a monosaccharide, and so on. Okay? Then think about different examples of living organisms and be able to apply these knowledge in a practical context.